Hey everybody, it's Greg Flyshaker, Greg Fly to my friends, and here's a quick video on how to make a glass perone. Perone. Here is a picture of my son. The first time I ever saw what one was. It's a Spanish, a traditional Spanish vessel for drinking wine communally with your friends and family, and it has a spout on it so that you don't have to put your lips on it, and you just pour it into your mouth. And uh, the more you practice, the further away from your mouth you can pour it. So. Um, they're a lot of fun to use and here I'm going to try to make one. It's okay. It's not awesome. So if you've uh, never followed along on glass blowing before, you have to layer it up one layer at a time. So this is going to be a clear glass. That's my first gather. Went into the furnace. I'm not going to spin the uh, camera around every time, but here we go. We're going back in for another layer and I'll get one more before it's done. But in between each one, you want to shape it up, which is what I'm doing right here with the wood block. And you want to keep that wet so that it doesn't burn and scar your glass. So you can see, I think if you look closely, the bubble's already formed in there. And that blow hose hanging from the end of it allows me to sit at the bench and blow through the end of the pipe while I'm working by myself. So each time I gather more glass on it, I shape it up. I get it at the right temperature. And then I inflate the bubble to the desired size and shape, keeping thick parts thick where I want to and thinning out parts that I need thin. So... Ideally, you've thought about the piece ahead of time as you're making it, where you need to thin it out, where you need to keep it thick. And there we go. One more. That's the last gather. So this is all the glass I'm going to use, uh, basically speaking. I need to make the spout. But I'm going to make the body first. And as you look at it, it's upside down. So on your left, as you look at it, that'll be the bottom of the prone. And right now where it's getting fat up by the pipe will actually be the mouth. And you, you shape it, and then you turn it over during the process. So I blew the shoulder out there let it hang down. That's actually to thin it out a little bit, get the right shape. And uh, this is not going to be, because I'm not a professional glass blower. this is not going to be perfectly on center. Um, I need to get better. <laughs> I'm working at it. But it gives you an idea of how to make it. And for something like this, it's just a sort of a fun piece. It really doesn't matter if it's perfectly on center or not. So you can see I stretched the neck out, and now I'm blowing the bottom out. You can start to see uh, the, the bulbous shape you're going to end up with before you turn it over hanging it down again, blowing it out, shaping it up. You kind of do this uh, several times uh, until you get what you're looking for. So get the heat. As you're sitting at the bench, it cools down. So you can only work with it for um, a little bit of time before you have to heat it back up. Trying to get it right. I need to fix that bottom because it's round. It's not going to sit down correctly. So here we go. Flatten it out so it'll sit on your table. Really pressing the bottom in so it's concave. That's for two reasons. Uh, one kind of like a decanter you want the wine to pour over that and aerate as it goes into the prone and then also um, that's where i'm going to put the punty which is what i'm making right now that's what i'm going to hold on to the piece when i turn it over so i just put a little crimp in there and that crimp is where i'll knock it off at the end so centered up again you can see i didn't really hit center there shame on me put the pipe away and you can see the the wobble um, i'm just not that worried about it right now I'm going to open the mouth up a little bit. That's where you pour the wine in. Or, you know, this could be a vase or a decanter all by itself, but there's a, another step here. And this is where the spout goes on. So it's in slow motion, but you get glass fresh from the furnace. Put it on the side where you want the spout to be. And then you'll see I'll turn this punty up. And then I'm going to push through the wall or into the wall of the vessel. And you'll start to see that hot tip of the punty go into it right there. It's kind of going through the wall. And now I know I've, I've made it in and I'm going to slowly pull it out. And it's that extra glass that I pushed into the wall of the vessel and I'm pulling out that makes the spout. It's kind of hard to see, but that, as I'm pulling out, that's hollow now because I grabbed that glass from the vessel side and I'm pulling out. So it's a hollow spout. And now you got to shape the spout and you, you don't have a lot of time to do this. So get it right. Right now, the spout is closed off, and so I'm squeezing right there is to knock the closed off end off without closing it up. So I'll fire polish it so no one cuts themselves when they play with it, when they drink out of that. And there we go. That last piece was the uh, the spout, and now I'm going to try it out. So you got to let it cool down. You don't do this right away, but a couple days later, a day later, look, that holds literally a whole bottle. Kind of fun to pour into a glass, and then... Try not to spill all over yourself, right? Hold it up. Never put your lips on it. Hold it away if you dare. It's easy to spill. 
So make sure you have a little napkin or a cloth. And there you go, how to make a glass pro.